Hello everyone, welcome to Grammar and Writing Lesson 122. So we've been talking about nouns as complements. Um, we talked about them being predicate nominatives in our last lesson. Now we're going to talk about them as direct not excuse me, direct objects. Remember that a predicate nominative follows a linking verb. Well, a direct object is when you have a complement following your action verb. So complements which follow action verbs are called objects. They are direct objects and indirect objects. <clears throat> a direct object is a noun or a pronoun that follows an action verb and receives the action from that verb. It answers the question, whom or what, after the verb. So for example, Tony rearranged her, excuse me, Tori rearranged her room. Rearranged is an action verb, so there may be a direct object. Tori rearranged what? The answer is room. So room is the direct object. Tori rearranged room. Because if you just said Tori rearranged, yeah, you could say that, but you, you would want to know what she rearranged, but so it's better to have that direct object. If no word answers the question, whom or what, after the verb, the sentence does not have a direct object. And remember, your direct object cannot be part of a prepositional phrase. We'll get to again in a minute. The diamond shone brightly. Okay, so your verb is shown. Diamond shone what? Well, there is no answer. Did the sh diamond shine anything? No. Brightly is an adverb telling how it shone. So you have to be careful. You have to think about what the meanings of the words are. You can't just see that there's a word there and assume that it's the complement. Um, that's where, that's one of your weak areas, guys, in uh, your grammar, is that you don't think about what words mean a lot of times. And you just answer whatever you think would uh, fulfill the formula. But that's not what you do in English. Direct objects can never be in prepositional phrases, like I said earlier. For example, John hit the ball over the fence. John hit what? John hit the ball. Ball is the direct object. John did not hit the fence. Fence is the object of the preposition over. So John hit what? He hit the ball. He didn't hit the fence. Direct objects may be compounds. We ate fish and chips. We ate what? Fish and chips. Fish and chips is the compound direct object because you can't say they just ate fish but not the chips. It's both of the things that they ate. That's all left for today. So your homework is to complete language. See pages 149 through 150. Let's talk through your directions. In Think A, you need to underline the action verb two times. Underline the subject one time. Then ask what or whom after the subject and verb and circle the direct object. So you circle the word that answers the question what or whom. So let's look at the first three together. I have found the lost coin. What's your verb? Have found. Very good. That's your action. That's what's happening. Who has found? I have found. I have found what or whom? Coins. Very good. That's what you found. So I have found coins. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Joni read a book and several magazines for her report. What's your action verb? Read. Very good. Who read? Joni read. What did Joni read? Joni read what? You said book. You are correct. She read a book. Is that the only thing she read? No, she also read magazines. So you have a compound direct object. She did not read reports. And that is part of a prepositional phrase anyway, so it could not possibly be the direct object. The cow had overturned the bucket of milk. What's your verb? 
had overturned. Very good. What or who had overturned? Cow had overturned. Cow had overturned what? Well, it can't be milk because that's part of a prepositional phrase. So what is it that he overturned? The bucket. Very good. Okay, so you'll do the rest of Think A like that. Think B says, underline the verbs two times and label them AB for action verb or LB for linking verb. Underline the subjects one time. Circle the complements and label them PN for predicate nominative or DO for direct object. So here you have to determine, you have to distinguish between action verbs and linking verbs. If you have an action verb, it's going to be a direct object. If you have a linking verb, it'll be a predicate nominative. Number one, Ethan and Jacob painted the fence and repaired the gate. So what's our verb? Or even verbs? Here it's verbs. There's two actions. They painted and they repaired. Who painted and repaired? Ethan and Jacob. Very good. Now, are these action verbs or are these linking verbs? Well, painted is an action. It's something you do. So we'll label it AV. Repaired is also an action, something that you do. So you label it AV. So Jacob and Ethan painted and repaired what? Well, they painted the fence. They repaired the gate. Is fence and predicate nominative or direct object? Well, it has to be a direct object because it goes with an action verb, which means that gate is also a direct object. All right, let's look at number two. Paul became a stronger Christian because of his difficulties. What's our verb? Became. Very good. Who became? Paul became. Okay, what kind of verb is became? It's a linking verb. That's right. It's on our list and it's not an action of any kind. So what's our complement? Paul became what? Remember, it's Paul equals what? Christian. That's right. Okay. So is Christian PN or DO? Well, because it goes with a predicate nominative, it is, or excuse me, a linking verb, it is a predicate nominative. So PN. Paul equals Christian. Very good. Okay, let's take a look at the think back. Become and seem will be linking verbs in their most popular use. Look at page 116 for other reminders to help you distinguish action verbs from linking verbs. If a verb is not on the verb list, you can assume it is an action verb. Now let's look at the go back. Check your complements and think B. Predicate nominatives should rename the subjects and direct objects should not. Remember that what it means by rename the subject is that you could say that it is equal to the subject. It's another name for that subject. Okay, that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions.